Hello, it's Sam back with another iOS 10 screencast. Today I'm going to take a look at some new data pre-fetching APIs that are shared between UI Table View and UI Collection View. The sample app that I'm using is a really simple collection view with cells that just contain a really large emoji. As you can see when I scroll it takes a second or two for each cell to load its data. The new data prefetching APIs allow you to specify a new data source object that's responsible for loading the data in advance of when it needs to be displayed on the screen. This API is defined in a protocol and it has just two methods, only one of which is actually required. I'm going to create an extension on Emoji Collection View Controller to declare conformance to the UI Collection View Data Source Prefetching Protocol. The single required method is Collection View Prefetch Items at Index Paths, and I'm, for now I'm just going to print out what that Index Paths property is and get a handle on exactly how this behaves. Jumping up to View Did Load, I then need to set the Prefetch Data Source property on Collection View to equal myself. Then build and run. And if you take a look at a log without doing any scrolling, you can see that it's prefetched some things, but none of those are on the screen. It only prefetches things that haven't appeared on the screen. And then as I scroll, you can see that it prefetches other items that are further down that collection view. This prefetch method only gives you index paths, and it'll give you a whole set of them at any one time. I don't have access to a cell at this time in order to update its appearance. Instead, all I can do is kick off a data loading request, and then access that data later on in order to populate the cell. At this point, the architecture of your app is incredibly important. Emojirator uses subclasses of operation, or NS operation, in order to load the data. Because of the way that I use the delegate to populate the cells, all I need to do in my prefetch method is run off to the data source, extract the operation, and then chuck it onto a queue. Later on, in the delegate method, I find that operation and then do different things depending on whether the operation is completed or it's still running. I'm going to replace this print statement with some actual useful code. I'm going to loop through that index paths array. Now this is actually ordered in terms of expected priority. That doesn't make a lot of difference to the implementation that I'm using. First up, I'm going to have a look to see whether or not I've already got a loading operation for that index path. If I have, then I'm just going to return because I don't need to load it again. If I don't, I'm going to ask the data store for a data loader for that particular index path using the load emoji rating at method. Now that I've got that data loader, which is a subclass of operation, I can and add it to the loading queue and I'm also going to store it in the loading operations dictionary using the index path as a key. This then fits in nicely with the existing machinery for displaying cells. Build and run can see that the first load doesn't make any difference but then as I scroll you can see that most of these cells are all preloaded for when they appear on the screen. The data has already been prefetched using this prefetch method. I scroll back up the same is true just one or two that haven't quite finished their loading operation by the time they're required to appear. You can see that that makes the collection view appear quite a lot more responsive. Something you might be concerned about is the fact that I'm loading all of this data, but if I scroll really, really quickly, I don't actually need it all. There'll be a load of data operations that get kicked off, but then I'll never see them because they'll have scrolled past them really quickly. Well, UI Collection View Data Source Prefetching has got you covered with the optional cancel method. To implement this optional cancel method, I'm going to jump back into that extension. The method is called collection view cancel prefetching for items at index paths. And once again, I get given an array of index paths. I'm going to loop through those and then see whether or not I can find a data loader within the loading operations dictionary for that specific index path. If I can, it's just an operation, so I'm going to cancel it. And I'm then going to remove it from the loading operations dictionary. And see that if I build and run this, then there is no change in the behavior as you'd expect. But now, potentially, there are operations that are being cancelled rather than being allowed to run when they're not needed. And with that, you've seen all there is to see with regards to the new data source prefetching methods inside a collection view. Remember that a UI table view has almost exactly the same methods with collection view switched out for table view. I really like to see tiny little simple things like this that can make a real world of a difference. In the past, had you wanted to do this, you'd have had to estimate when things are going to be required yourself. Now, UIKit can give you some kind of estimate as to what you're going to need in the future, taking into account your current scroll position and the velocity with which the user is scrolling. I trust you've enjoyed this bite-sized piece of knowledge from the grab bag of random UI kit improvements in iOS 10. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you again later for another iOS 10 screencast. Cheerio, bye bye.